Simple smoothing techniques are ideal when the time series is primarily described by random variation around an unknown level and there are no variations due to trend or seasonality. These techniques help reduce the effect of random fluctuations. Two examples of smoothing techniques are the moving average and the exponential smoothing technique. The moving average technique is straightforward and very popular. It works by computing an average from a fixed number of the most recent observations. It's called a moving average because as new observations are available or added, the average is updated by including the newest observation and dropping the oldest observation. A more detailed video of calculating moving averages in Excel is posted to eCampus, but we'll walk through the general steps of applying the moving average approach. This example uses the service calls data set. So here is a list of the customer service calls received over the past three weeks. We want to do four things. Construct three period moving averages, plot the time series and the moving averages, use the three period moving averages to forecast and calculate our FIT statistics, the MSE, the MAD, and the MAPE. Here we calculate the three period moving average. We sum the number of calls from days one, two, and three, and then divide by three, our number of observations, for an average of 295. In the next row are the sum of the number of calls from days two, three, and four, divided by three for an average of 290. So comparing columns two and three, the specific values differ. Let's see what that looks like. This chart illustrates the actual number of customer service calls day by day in blue, and then the three period moving average in green. Note how the green line does not reach the same extremes as the blue line. It has a smoothing effect. Though there's still a fair bit of movement going on, we see that our green line is a little bit smoother. That's why we call these smoothing methods. So how about forecasting? Our data set includes calls over a 21 day period, but what about day 22? We can use the values we have to predict day 22. So we add together the values for days 19, 20, and 21, divide by 3, and find an estimate for day 22, which is 320.67. Now, to evaluate the results, we can look at the MSE, MAD, and MAPE. First, we have to compute the forecast error by subtracting the estimated value from the actual value from each day. So the MSE, or mean squared error, we multiply the sum of the squared errors by 1 over n. The lower the MSE, the better. A value of 0 would mean your model perfectly predicts y. And that would be pretty spectacular because that's pretty darn unlikely. MAD, or the mean absolute deviation, looks at the absolute value of the error multiplied by 1 over n. And the mean absolute percentage error, or MAPE, looks at the absolute value of the error divided by the observed value multiplied by 1 over n. A value of less than 10% is exceptional, but even anything under 20% is pretty darn good. 
So to discover that our MAPE is 3.92% is pretty darn spectacular. So the moving average is straightforward to calculate, but it does have some shortcomings. First, M, or the period, which could be three, five, seven, et cetera, days, is arbitrary. We've actually seen this a lot with politicians trying to find the right interval to make decisions about reopening schools and restaurants in the wake of COVID-19. In these scenarios, all observations carry the same weight, and we also find that the technique assigns exponentially decreasing weights as observations get older. So it may not be a great fit if you're forecasting over long periods of time. The good news is we have other options for those other scenarios.